In this section, we will define how the centrifugal compressor curve is generated. Specifically, we will see how all dynamic machines produce head, whether they process a compressible or incompressible fluid, by importing a velocity to the fluid. To begin our discussion, let's observe a typical compressor stage. Here you can see a cut section of a multi-stage centrifugal compressor. An example of a stage is highlighted here. Let's have a closer look. As you can see here, a compressor stage is symmetrical, so we can focus on the upper half of it. A compressor stage is defined as one impeller, the stationary inlet passage, the discharge passage known as the diffuser as highlighted here, and the seals, namely the eye labyrinth seal and the shaft labyrinth seal. Here you can see a simplified animation of the gas bath inside the compressor stage. Now, each compressor stage, like the one highlighted here, at a given flow and impeller speed, will produce a certain amount of head, as illustrated here, and will have a specific stage efficiency. These two points are known as the impeller design point. Recall that any dynamic curve, whether for a compressor or a pump, has the characteristics of producing increased head only at a lower fluid flow, assuming of course the inlet speed and the inlet gas angle are constant. Now we have seen the gas bath inside the upper half of the first compressor stage. Let's now see the gas bath inside the entire three consecutive first stages of this compressor. So here you have the first stage, the second stage, and the third stage. And here you can see the gas bath. Before we continue, a few important facts and relationships need to be presented. These relationships are the definition of a vector, tip speed, flow as a function of velocity, flow related to conditions, and the concept of actual flow. In addition, there is the important concept of an equivalent orifice. So let's start with this one. Given any impeller configuration, specific areas can be reduced to equivalent orifices. The eye or inlet area, as depicted here, the discharge area, between any two veins, the eye seal, and the shaft seal. This concept makes it much easier to understand that for a given area, gas flow will change directly proportional to the differential pressure and the compressor stage. So there is an optimum design velocity for the inlet of the impeller and the discharge of the impeller. These velocities are controlled by selection of a proper inlet eye area and discharge area, based on the impeller flow requirement. Again, the concept of an equivalent orifice is helpful to understand that the gas velocity is dependent on the geometry of the specific impeller. Also, the process system can be reduced to a simple orifice. In any process, the suction side of the process working at a pressure P1, and the discharge side of the process, working at a pressure P2, can be conceived as an orifice placed at the inlet and discharge of the compressive flanges for a given flow condition, as depicted here. Now, I'm going to present the definitions of facts and relationships necessary for the discussion that will follow. Of course, we'll get back to them in more details in later videos.
The first definition is that of a vector. A vector describes a magnitude and a direction. The tip speed of the impeller blade, referred to in this course with the letter U, can be calculated by multiplying the diameter of the impeller by the speed of the shaft and then dividing it by 229. The flow related to velocity can be calculated using the following formula. It is equal to the area times the velocity of the gas times 60. And finally, the flow related to conditions can be calculated using the following formula, where the subscript I refers to the initial conditions and the subscript F refers to the final conditions. Please note here that the relationships presented are all in British units. Metric units are not presented in this section, but can be easily derived referring to appropriate conversion tables. To begin our discussion, let's assume that we are operating at the impeller design point, as depicted here and that we have removed the side plate of the impeller and we are examining the flow between any two blades. Typical impellers of centrifugal compressors are shown here for a reminder. So recall we have open radial impellers and closed radial impellers. Here you can see a schematic of any impeller for our purposes, showing the upper half of the impeller with the side plate removed. Let's have a closer look. In this impeller, only two velocities need to be considered to properly describe the generation of head. At the tips of the blades, there are two velocities that are present. The blade tip velocity, identified as U, and the velocity relative to the blade, identified as V relative. The blade tip velocity is the function of the diameter of the blade and the blade rotational speed. The velocity relative to the blade is a function of the area between the blades, the flow rate at that location, and the angle of the blade at the discharge of the impeller. Now, summing these two velocities, the resultant or absolute velocity defines the magnitude and the direction of the gas as it exits the blade. For this discussion, we assume that the velocity relative to the blade exactly follows the blade angle. That is, the slip is equal to zero. This assumption can be used since it will not impact the final conclusion of our discussion. If we now resolve the absolute velocity and to x and y components as seen here, then the x-axis projection of the component is the tangential velocity of the gas at the impeller discharge. Now, according to the energy equation of Euler, the energy created by any dynamic machine is proportional to the product of the tip speed and the tangential velocity. Let's go back to the schematic of the upper half of the impeller, showing the blade tip velocity and the relative velocity. Let's now assume that the head required by the process changes such that the flow through the impeller reduces. Let's now examine the discharge velocity to see what happens at this reduced flow condition. Assuming that the rotor speed is constant, it can be seen that the tip speed value does not change, since tip speed is, if you recall, a function of impeller diameter and shaft speed. However, the velocity relative to the blades will be reduced as a result of a lower volume flow passing through a fixed area, resulting in a low velocity relative to the blade at the discharge. Recall that the velocity relative to the blade 
is a function of the area between the blades, the flow rate at that location, and the angle of the blade at the discharge of the impeller. Now, if we again sum the velocity vectors to obtain the new absolute velocity R2, we can see that the angle of the gas exiting the blade is now significantly reduced. Let's now remove the vectors u, v relative 1 and v relative 2, since we don't need them anymore for the discussion that follows, and keep only r1 and r2. If we now resolve these absolute velocities into x and y components, we will have the following. Notice here how the x projection of the new tangential velocity is greater than the previous value. Since the head produced by the blade is proportional to the tip speed, which in our case here is unchanged, and the tangential velocity, which in our case here has increased, then we can see that the reduction of flow through the blade has resulted in increased head or energy imparted to the fluid. Practically, this makes sense, since the slower the gas proceeds through the vein, the more time it has to pick up energy imparted by the blades, and as a result will increase the energy or head produced within the impeller. Therefore, it can be seen that for all dynamic blades and impellers, which increase the energy of the fluid by the action of the vein on the fluid, that they can increase fluid energy only at the lower flow rate, assuming of course that the speed of the impeller and the inlet angle of the fluid to the blade remain unchanged. In the previous video, the discussion was focused on the characteristic of a backward leaning vein impeller. Most centrifugal compressor veins are backward leaning, since they produce a greater head rise from impeller design point to the low flow operating point. The low flow limit of operation for centrifugal compressors is known as surge. Head rise is defined as the head produced by the impeller at the low flow operating point divided by the head produced by the impeller at the impeller design point. Today, the industry prefers backward leaning impellers with an external or exit blade angle of approximately 40 to 50 degrees. This blade angle will produce head rises in the range of 5 to 15 percent, depending on the gas density. Let's now shift our attention to radial veins. Radial veins are used in some older design open type first stage impellers and in some modern impellers that operate at a very low flow. Let's now examine the effect of a radial blade on the performance curve. If we were to design an impeller with radial blades, let us examine again what would happen when we changed flows from a rated point to a lower flow. At the rated point, the blade tip speed and velocity relative to the blade are illustrated as follows. And here, the sum to obtain the absolute velocity, R1. Notice that the velocity relative to the blade is completely radial, assuming zero slip. At a lower flow, tip speed will remain constant, assuming of course constant shaft speed, and the relative velocity will decrease as in the case of the backward leaning blades. If we again sum the velocity vectors, we obtain the new absolute velocity R2. Now notice here that since the relative velocity follows the radial blade path, the magnitude of the tangential velocities of R1 and R2 remains constant, 
regardless of the value of relative velocity. To better illustrate this, let's first get rid of the vectors u, v relative 1 and v relative 2, and then resolve r1 and r2 into x and y components, as depicted here. It becomes clear now that the two tangential velocities of r1 and r2 are identical. Now, since the energy or head generated by the blade is the product of tip speed, which is in our case here in changed, and a tangential velocity also in changed, then the design head produced in a radial impeller will remain essentially constant. Therefore, the curve shape will be flatter and will possess much less of a head rise than that of a non-radial vein. In reality though, the effects of friction will in fact produce a curve shape that will increase from high flows to low flows, but the effects will produce much less of a head increase. This value is typically around 3% head rise or less. This is an important fact to remember, since the operating point of any centrifugal compressor will be the intersection of the head required by the process and the head produced by the compressor. What I want you to understand from this discussion is that a centrifugal compressor that has a curve with a low head rise will be extremely sensitive to process changes than a compressor that has a curve with higher head rise. In summary, and to finish off this section, I want you to be aware that the previous discussion can be equally applied to pump impellers, since pumps also operate on a fluid, but in this case a liquid. The only exception is that regardless of the type of liquid used in pumps, the velocity relative to the blade will never change, since the liquid is incompressible. In the case of a centrifugal compressor, however, this will not be true, since the gas is compressible, and the velocity relative to the blade at the discharge of the impeller will change as a result of pressure and temperature of that gas at the exit. Therefore, the statement that head produced by a compressor impeller will remain constant at a given speed is not totally true.